justice has not been served. They're, they still have a lot of stuff to do. They still have to go through a lot of things. They have to let them know what is right and what's wrong. Perhaps the most difficult part of the current raging battle between Israel and the Palestinians is for leaders there to get an, an immediate handle on how to shut down the instinct for immediate revenge. Is that simply possible based on generations of hate and bloodshed? That leads off our discussion into the latest from that portion of the Middle East. Welcome into Midpoint, Washington Bureau Chief of the Jewish Telegraphic Agency, Ron Campius, and journalist and Middle Eastern analyst Jamal Dejani joins us today. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having us. Let us go ahead and hopefully we can see you both here in a moment here to make sure that everybody is here. Let me ask you both to start out talking about Benjamin Netanyahu because they have arrested six Jewish suspects who are believed to have burned to death. Uh, let me just back this up here. They have arrested six Jewish suspects. They are believed to be complicit in the death of the Arab teenager in revenge for the killing of three Israeli teens. Now, we are going back and forth on revenge killings right now. Is it not fair to say that Netanyahu has done exactly the right thing here to have these individuals arrested and at least try to put some sort of stop to this revenge violence and the revenge back and forth that's going on here? Ron, I'm going to go ahead and start with you. Yeah, I think it's, uh, he did the right thing, but it's, it's, it's also it's more of a function of... Uh, of a correct society doing the right thing. If there's a murder, you 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 pull out law enforcement. They track down the murderers and they uh, uh, and they bring them to justice. Uh, the question is whether uh, you know the this is going to contain the the cycle that's that started. And uh, and already you're seeing people rolling back. At least on the Israeli side, they're rolling back their rhetoric because I think there's a sense uh, across the board from left to right in Israel that perhaps after the death of the three. Uh, after the bodies of the three kidnapped teenagers were found, that some Israeli politicians might have gone overboard in their rhetoric. And uh, you know, I was speaking to some people in Israel today, who were saying maybe that give the that gave the thugs, the the murderers who, who killed this uh, teenager, it, it, it might have in their minds given them given them license to uh, to go ahead and do this. Jamal, let's talk about also not only that issue, but this license to kill, this revenge killing that is going on because Hamas said on Monday seven fighters from Rafah in southern Gaza had been killed in Israeli airstrikes. That is in retaliation. They are vowing to avenge the deaths. More than 20 rockets fired from Gaza into southern Israel late Sunday and early Monday. Again, Netanyahu does what he can, but this doesn't seem to have stopped one bit the need for revenge violence. Look, uh, Hamas uh, basically does not represent the entire Palestinian people. Uh, uh, the Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, immediately condemned the killing of the three Israeli teens. And in no, you know, you, and Hamas, by the way, has not taken responsibility for the killing of the teens. And so the, the conflict between Israel and Hamas is totally different than what goes on in the West Bank. I mean, we have been seeing negotiations uh, between the Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas and the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu going on for infinitum without any progress. What we're seeing now is a result of this frustration on the ground. Uh, when, you, when you talk about uh, the Prime Minister of Israel, uh, you know, sending his condolences to the uh, victim of the, the recent victim of the Palestinian teen and his family, this is a step in the right direction. However, if you look at the, 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 what happened in the past just two, two to three weeks, more than 10 Palestinians in the best West Bank were killed. The, re, the most recent violence happened in front of Ofer prison where demonstrators, two other Palestinian youth were shot to death caught on camera, including CNN's camera, and those soldiers who shot them were not brought into justice. So this step now after these uh, terrorist settlers, basically, or Jewish terrorists who killed and burned this young man alive were caught on camera by Palestinians, incidentally, while kidnapping him. I think it created is soul searching for the Israelis because, as my colleague mentioned earlier, there was a, a lot of rhetoric. I mean, you had Israelis marching in the streets, chanting death to the Arabs. You had Israeli lawmakers posting 
Facebook pages demanding revenge and retaliation against all Palestinians, young children, etc. I think we're going through a very major point, a watershed event, and how it is handled by both sides will determine whether the violence will continue or not, aside from what happens with Hamas or not. Okay. Because then, then, let, then let me stop you there, but let me deal with this then, what comes down to the two sides here. Is it not fair to say, and certainly some people would say it is fair to say, that whether it's the Israeli side or whether the Palestinians, with Hamas, whomever, it would seem that the leaders have lost a little control over their people. They are trying to quell this, at least Netanyahu certainly is, but then you have revenge killings, and then you have other attacks, and then you have burnings, and then you have all these horrible things that are going on here. It seems to the world as if there is a, there are tentacles to these different organizations. The people involved here don't want to be brought down from their, their need for revenge and their need for violence. Is that fair? I'll throw that out to whoever wants to take that first. Well, well extremists control the agenda. They've controlled the agenda for decades. Violence begets violence, and yes, we we have seen on the Palestinian side, people view Mahmoud Abbas as a weak president, someone who has not delivered uh, on the promise for peace. Oslo has been going, the negotiations over Oslo have been going on for decades, and their lives have deteriorated, it, they, it has not improved. and. I think my colleague will agree we have not seen a more right-leaning government in Israel like with what we've been seeing today. Ron, would you agree with that? Yeah, I think in some ways uh, this is uh, is probably one of the most one of the most right-wing governments. Probably certainly, maybe in the 80s, in the early 80s, there it might have leaned a, a little further right. It's it's almost like technical, but yes, there certainly is a, a right-wing government. But I think what the the issue here isn't so much a right-left issue. It's an almost an issue of boldness. Like, uh, like Mr. Dijani was saying, the the, uh, you, you, the 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 extremists are taking control of the agenda, and you, you don't have a boldness. And I think on either side, in terms of the moderates, you know, the example that came to my mind was in the mid 1990s, a Jordanian soldier killed uh, several 14-year-old girls who were just tourists in Jordan, tour Israeli tourists in Jordan, and uh, it wasn't just that the the Jordanians arrested this man and tried him and put him away for a very long time. King Hussein, the late King Hussein, flew to the town of Bet Shemesh by terrible coincidence. That happens that two of the alleged killers are from the same town, Bet Shemesh. And he he sat down, he sat down at the knees of the parents of these girls and he begged their forgiveness. It was a transformative moment that a very fresh and fragile peace with Israel and Jordan could have collapsed right there. And I think what you need now is is, is something along those lines. You do have I think uh, at last count, 500 Israelis have signed up to go to the family of this murdered youth, <clears throat> Mohammed Heder, tomorrow and, and, and pay their condolences. If you had an Israeli leader, if, if Benjamin Netanyahu, he made the phone call, but if he went in person and, and, and spoke to these people, that, that might be a transformative moment. Okay, let's talk transformative moments. I have two sound bites that I want you to hear. First of all, from Shimon Peres, the Israeli president, and then Mark Rejev, who is the Israeli government spokesman, uh, talking about their condolences and their feelings and their emotion after what has happened. Uh, Shimon Peres is first. All right, I'm told that this is not actually an interview. This is Shimon Perez, who was saying the agony is ours. I can't compare it with the agony of the mother and father, but it's the highest degree of regret and shame because we are the ones that should carry the responsibility for it and not to stop it until we shall end it. Gentlemen, let me ask you, it would seem as if that on the Israeli side there are moments of condolences coming here, that from the Israeli side the world would seem to guess and would seem to assume, and again, that's always dangerous, that at least the Israelis are trying to quell this. It would seem almost to the world that Abbas is not willing to quell this in any shape. They are looking for a fight. They want it. They will, as they even said, open the gates. They will, as they even said, open the gates of hell. That there is no one on the Palestinian side or Hamas to stop this. Jamal, I'm going to go ahead and start with you first. Please react to that. I think it's an unfair statement because you bring back Hamas, and I said, Again, listen to the statement that was issued by the Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas, 
who immediately condemned the killing of the three Israeli teens and uh, offered his condolences. Now, uh, again, if you, if you pay attention to Hamas, you will have the extremists win. Just like if you monitor all the social media, all the rhetoric coming from the extremists on the Israeli side, the calls and, and the chance death to the Arabs, uh, we, we will not move forward. This is, this, we are not at a stage now where we can repeat the blame game. Okay, I'm going to have you to know. stop you there. 30 seconds in, if you please answer out and respond, Ron. Yeah, I think uh, it's true. You know, it, Abbas could always do more. Hamas has never done anything more. Hamas has been terrible throughout all this. Abbas could always do more, but he did more than he's ever done before. When last week he went to Jeddah, to Saudi Arabia, in the middle of the Arabic world, and in Arabic he condemned the murders, which is what the Israelis have always asked of him. Not just to do this to the Western world, but to do this in Arabic to the Arabic world. Any of it can be done, but that, I think, was a, was a big step. Gentlemen, it is unfortunate that we have run out of time, and again, we just do want to point out that we have run out of time, and again, we just do want to point out that this continues. This is something, this is a story we're going to be following for some time. We will have you back on again very soon because, uh, unfortunately, I, I fear that we have not seen the end of the violence right now uh, between these two countries this time around. Thank you very much, Jamal Dajani, and also Ron Campius for joining us today on Midpoint. Thank you. Thank you. And it is worth to say again, as we had reported earlier, in case you had missed the report, that according to Hamas, seven of its fighters from southern Gaza had been killed in Israeli airstrikes. Those are its heaviest losses in months. They have vowed to avenge their deaths, warning on its website that the Zionist enemy will pay a heavy price. And that is a quote unquote. It's interesting to note that, as Jamal says, you need to separate Hamas from the Palestinians. And this, of course, is something which is always part of the discussion. Our discussion continues here on the Newsmax TV network. As we continue, you tell us what you think, we will respond as well. This is Midpoint, where every day we question everything.